Hello, happy Saturday. Good morning from Thriving Heart Studio. I'm here today to lead our February workshop entitled Illuminating Lights. Thank you for being here. Trying to make sure I can see myself. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, feel free to leave any comments, any feedback, anything that these ideas might spark in you. I will share some ideas too of how to incorporate these projects with your neurodivergent loved ones since I have a son with autism and art has been our connecting piece. We connect through art um, when we, there aren't a lot of things we share in common sometimes, but we share a creative um, bone, I guess, of creative gene that helps us connect as mom and son. So if that's something that you're looking for, we like to demonstrate and teach that here at Thriving Heart Studio and just expanding our neurodivergent uh, loved ones' lives with activities and things they can do in a world that isn't always suitable um, and accommodating to them. So first, I wanna explain the crafts I'll be doing. Um, there'll be four different ones. I'll try to spend about 15 minutes on each I'm using a few different mediums. So I'm gonna start with colored pencils and markers. I'm gonna to move to acrylics, which you could also use washable um, paints or tempura if you would prefer. Acrylics blend really nicely, so that's why I'll be using them. And I'm gonna use some oil pastels on black paper because that's a really awesome way to pop with the light and the contrast. And uh, those are about the mediums I'm using. So if you have those on hand, be perfect for these crafts and they're pretty much standard ones that you know I use in a lot of my different workshops so to begin um, we are going to talk about light right adding light to our artwork and I thought for the month of February it was a perfect theme because it tends to be darker with winter and we're missing the sunlight and the moonlight and everything that uh, really helps our bodies uh, balance and feel good and Anyway, so if we can incorporate it into our art, we can kind of stimulate that light, the light that we are, right? And really help our children understand how they can radiate their own light and love into this world. So as you're doing these projects, that could be something that you discuss with your children. Um, how are you radiating forth your light, your unique influence um, in this world? So radiating hearts, the easiest one I'm gonna start with here. Um, I'm going to actually be using construction paper so you can see what I'm doing, but you can also use just cardstock and a cardstock paper here to create on. I'm going to show some examples. So Liam made this one choosing the fiery colors and some white paint there. I made this one with just lots of different uh, rays coming off of that one and here we have one with some shimmery shimmery paint and some glitter glue and another one with a little bit more of that iridescent light <laughs> coming through but I'm going to show you how to actually make keep your heart white and add some rays that are white and we're going to use tape so first I'm going to cut a heart and if you have a pencil I fold it nicely so you get that nice symmetric look you will need a scissors here just make your first part and cut all right so here's my center heart that i will be using now i'm using this as a template so i will remove it but you can also in incorporate these in your piece you know Take what I, what I share here and add your own variety and taste to it, whatever you prefer. So I've got some masking tape. You can also use washi tape. Um, we're gonna tape this down onto our sheet. Just a little paste. I'm gonna center it. So I have lots of room for these rays coming off. All right, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. All right, so there's my heart centered. And now what I'm going to do is, you know, rays tend to expand or start, yes, start smaller and expand. So we can kind of mimic that with masking tape. So if you have an edge or a table, just kind of cut and 
I'm going to start at the one end and just kind of create. Okay, so it's just a little bit smaller on the one side and wider on the other side. Put the smaller end on your heart, okay, and extend it out. And then you try to make them about the same, the same size if we're going to make, you know, let's say four or five of these rays. I dropped my tape. <laughs> so here's another one. I'll extend off this way. And we'll do two more here. <laughs> you might have the same. <laughs> kinetic issue when you cut your tape. So, hold on to that tape. Alright, cutting two more rays out of masking tape here. So basically, for this craft, you're not so much adding white as you're protecting the white as you decorate around it. And not everyone needs necessarily this kind of template, you know, but if you do it, you guarantee a little bit more freedom as you're creating. So, all right, there's my heart ready to decorate. So I think what I'm going to do is just do a combination of markers and colored pencils. And I'm not going to be too, like, uh, precise. I'm going to just kind of make things radiating out. colors. And this is where you and your child really just start tuning into the art piece and what your intuition is guiding you to do next. I never really plan art too rigidly, but give room for that creative process to occur while you're creating. So we're going to add some blue now. Just like a sun, rays are coming out. And of course, we're going to add some yellow. I'm going to actually use a yellow marker here. Make different little rays. Sending out. I was thinking if you were, you know, teaching a lesson on a humanitarian kind of um, project or anything where love is being expressed in a concrete way in this world, you could incorporate this craft in with your lesson as the tactile activity. So as you see so far, I've got some rays going on. Let me add some red. And it's possible you can do squiggles too. We did that with Liam. You don't have to always make them straight. All right, and I think I'm just going to add a little bit of green. You see, it's okay if you kind of hit the masking tape. It's going to protect those areas. All right. So I'm going to call that a radiating heart. That's complete. So now we remove 
the hearts and the masking tape very carefully because sometimes masking tape likes to pick up the paper with it so just be careful washi tape is a little bit more forgiving if you have any of that if you wanted to you could grab glitter glue something a very light color and you could paint this white area so it sparkles and shines a little bit more i'm not going to do this during this workshop but i might add it afterwards very carefully taking off and mine ripped just a little bit but all right so that is trash and then ta-da it's hard to see in the light you can see the heart there and some of the whites and the colors all around so very easy very easy craft for kids to do um, and they can all look different and you can make your heart shapes different and you can make many of them and if you didn't want to use colored pencils and markers, you could use paint, right? And let it dry and then carefully remove the centerpiece. So radiating hearts is the first craft there complete. Now, I want to show you some nature themes, how light is reflected in water with sun and the moon. Hey, Micah, can you help me? <laughs> My cat is scratching. So, for instance, I made this one with light reflecting into the ocean, blending acrylics. There are so many examples you can look up. Liam helped make this one with the sunrise, colors in the background, and our friend actually taught us how to make ocean waves with a dry brush and white. So those are really awesome. I also made this for my fiance with the sun reflecting more into the water. So it's very uplifting to think of the ways that nature represents light and try your best to represent it with through paint. So what I'm going to do is paint a moon reflecting on the water. So I'm going to actually get everything set up here with a canvas and acrylics. I'm only going to use three colors of paint for this to make it super simple. And it is possible that you could also make templates for your child to create this kind of piece if they needed a, a little bit more structured um, for the fine motor activity. So hopefully you can see this as I create. I'm going to start by separating the sky from the water with a piece of masking tape. And this will just give me a really clear horizon. And I'm gonna do a little bit, a little bit more water than sky. All right. So we're gonna go with this deep blue for the sky. So what I'm going to do is leave, actually, I might even do this, pencil in, if you want, a moon. Because I am going to create this with white paint. And you could paint the whole thing dark and add the, but it, you know, it does, when you, as you layer acrylics, you can kind of see the darker underneath. So I like to kind of keep that white as I paint. So I'm just going to go around here really quickly and paint a night sky. And I'm just adding this directly because I need a lot of paint. So sometimes I just use the thing in my hand, the acrylics, so I don't have to, you know, waste some on paper. I just add it directly to my thicker brush. You could add some different shades in here. 
for your night sky. I'm just going to keep it simple with the dark blue. You see that coming out real dark there. You can also water down your acrylics a little bit to make them spread easier. When I'm working with Liam, we often water down our acrylics. And you know, you can play around with different phases of the moon. I like the full moon since it's gonna be the brightest. And we're gonna kinda of leave a little bit of a spot for the aura of the moon here. So I'm gonna just a little bit spread the blue onto the white carefully so I can blend a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna make all my my mark super straight and colory and any white that I see left behind here. All right, you can see there's my night sky. One thing that we can add to our night sky stars. I saw this beautiful technique to make stars and you put some white paint on a brush and you tap it with another brush. I'm going to try to find the right one here that would work. Probably a smaller brush. And then you take the second brush and you tap. We can't necessarily control where your stars are going to go with this, but you'll be able to see here how I easily added stars with a little bit of splattering. Okay, so now with that brush that's already white, I'm going to go ahead and paint my moon. And I am painting white on white. But you definitely want to do that. And I always like to have lots of paintbrushes on hand because once you put paint on a brush and you rinse it, um, it will no longer be a dry brush, right? For a while. So blending with light if you have a dry brush you can definitely get the light kind of like that whatever you want to call it the auras that a light leaves so i'm going to take a complete dry brush here Oop, that one's actually not very dry and i'm going to try to blend the edges here again with the dry brush making a moon aura Right. I'm gonna go ahead and call that my moon in the sky. Now you could add some little crater. Um, let's do that a little bit with some gray. You know, the moon. You can kind of see some of the craters on it at night. So we're gonna get a brand new brush for that. Let's get a good one. I'm actually gonna use like a really dry brush with this. I think. And just put a little accents of the moon craters. You don't have to be precise and make it look like exactly what the moon looks like. I'm going to use my finger here and just kind of blend it a little. And that came out a lot better than I expected. Yes. Right? There's my moon. You can kind of see the craters a little bit more. All right. 
So for the ocean, I'm actually going to blend that blue paint. I'm going to go ahead and put a good bit of portion out here with a lighter blue because sometimes in the ocean you'll see different colors reflecting, right? So we're going to start with those two blues. And I'm not really going to mix them together together, but I am going to kind of get them both on the brush at the same time. This is a trick with acrylic paints. Mix it on the canvas, not necessarily on the palette. All right, so now I'm just going to go across. And sometimes waves kind of go up and down. Let me see, if you can see this here. So it's not going to be perfectly like this. I did the sky. Give it a little bit more texture. We're always kind of darker near here. Now remember, we're going to have to remove our line. I'm going to very just carefully follow the horizon with my brush. You can touch up any little details later. All right, we're going to make sure we add some blue up there because the farther away something is, the darker it appears. So make sure you add some of that blue way up there we're just going to go ahead and keep on filling in especially with the lighter at the bottom this is a really cool stroke to work with your kids on back and forth you got a big area here don't have to be precise You could teach your loved one a lesson about the moon, the stars, astrology, and then add this craft as your tactile experience. Just keep that motion going. It does dry quickly. Remember with acrylics, they, they can dry quickly, which is going to be the benefit as we add the light into the water. Covering all those whites. Lots of light at the bottom. Blend any areas that might look a little bit too standing out. Right. So there's my ocean. See how it kind of has the light already reflecting with the two colors. Now I'm going to take any of the lighter blue I have and start. I'm going to actually get some more. creating the reflection of the moon. So we're going to just start with the lighter blue. Gently. Following down. going to have to kind of blend in there. And here's where you just kind of tune in and you're like, okay, it needs a little bit more here, a little bit more there. How do I want my, my blue to look? Okay. So I'm just going to get a little bit over here. So 
see how easy that was? <laughs> I added some of the light blue to the center. My last step is just to take some white and just add a little bit of white. And if you have a dry brush, this would be perfect to bring that dry brush out with your white brush so you can blend. I'm going to put a little bit of that white in and right away start blending it. It might work better if my blue was a little bit more dry. So you can give time for yours to dry before this step. We're just adding that white, which will be the light of the moon, into the water. Another paint off there, make sure it's kind of dry. I'm holding it kind of sideways. Just gently spread that white. I'm not going to add too much, just that little bit there. And that's going to be my, my moonbeams on water. What do you guys think? Think you could do that? Think you could help your child do that? Pretty simple. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get this area cleaned up a bit and then I'll move on to the next craft. So let's move this aside. We will let this piece dry. And I do have blue paint on my fingers. I'm gonna to wanna to get off for my next craft. Okay, so my next craft here is gonna be using black, either construction paper or black drawn paper, which I do have. And we're going to be creating a firefly Craft. I call Firefly Frenzy. So here's my black paper and I will be using oil pastels. You have a blending tool. This is great because remember light tends to have that aura and that blending so we're going to be able to do that with the oil pastels. I've just got some paper towels. I actually use my finger sometimes to blend too which as long as you've got something to wipe them off with will work perfectly with this craft. So um, this would be perfect if you were teaching your child about animal luminescence, because obviously lightning bugs have that luminescence as do some sea creatures. So this would be a wonderful um, tactile activity to pair with that type of lesson. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna actually draw a jar of fireflies in a nighttime sky. So I need, um, yellows, whites, greens for, for grass, um, and that's pretty much about it. So uh, you don't have to be a perfect jar drawer. I'm gonna show you, I'm not. I'm gonna show you how to just kinda wing it, draw one here. So this is a very bright yellow I'm gonna start with. Now I do want the jar to be the focus of the piece, and I'm gonna make it kinda sideways. So my jar is gonna be like it's in the grass sideways with these lightning bugs inside. So we're gonna go ahead and draw the lid. And jars come down. So it might not be a perfect looking jar. I'm going to leave one side um, not completely drawn 
because that's going to be kind of the grass coming up. So I have my initial sketch. I'm just going to like lightly sketch kind of like a feathery look around it. And then either with your finger or a blending tool, just kind of go across it. All right, and then do it again. And again, it takes a lot of repetition to make that aura. And remember, sometimes there's a little bit of light reflecting off the glass. I'm going to go ahead and put even more. Start with just a little bit, and as you get confident, okay, so there's my jar. Not very fancy, but you see I kind of got that glow going on. So you could actually go ahead and add some white. And when you're sketching, nothing is super precise. So right now I'm just blending the whites and the yellows, making the outline, okay, of my jar. <laughs> and mine doesn't look as symmetrical as some I've seen, but I'm trying. All right. So before anything else, I'm going to go ahead and do the grass. So I'm going to use different shades of green. And just kind of similar, just they're just coming up. This jar is in the grass. So lighter green, darker green. I even have a super light green for a little bit more accent colors there. I you didn't want to use your finger, I'm going to show you. Here's all the grass I just drew. I'm going to use this motion upward with some paper towel to just blend the grass a little bit or down. Down might be an easier motion for you, down or up. And then just go ahead and add more. Kind of keep layering it on with this craft. You have some of those pieces that might come up higher than others, right? So make sure you add those for that look. All right, I'm probably going to be satisfied with this. I'm just going to blend a little bit more with a paper towel. All right, so, so far I've got my jar in the grass. I like to see the lightning bugs for the last. So what I'm gonna do next is make a moon. Very simple, take your white, find a spot in the sky, make it smaller than your jar so that your jar continues to be the focal point of the piece. Slather a good bit of that white on there. I'm gonna use my finger, start blending in the center and move outward and you will create that moon aura so easily it even looks like the craters look at that how easy that was that took me like 30 seconds right so just make your moon somewhere in the sky and if you want find a corner 
of this to make stars because you don't want them to be too big at all so and I want make sure your stars are smaller than your lightning bugs okay so that you see a difference so I'm just gonna add a little bit of stars in the sky here and remember the sky kind of goes down in the back all right so there I added a moon and some stars easy peasy now get your yellow for lightning bugs now we're not going to actually draw a bug shape because that would be kind of complicated what we're going to do is draw almost like a little V okay and this will make it look like it has wings so little V I'm going to put some in my jar kind of sporadically See those little V's? They look like lightning bugs that way. Maybe once coming out. And they're coming into the night sky. And if you want to give the appearance of farther away, maybe they're going towards the moon and they're getting smaller. All right, so, so easy. This little V's give that appearance of lightning bugs. And that was a pretty simple craft, right? With these little blending techniques. And you know, like I said, my jar does not look perfect. You can look at some jars. Um, I actually saw this as a picture that someone had painted. So feel free to look at other people's artwork and see how you could represent it in your own unique way with your own medium or whatever. But um, you know, Obviously, I could use some practice drawing jars, which is fine, but we're not all proficient at everything with art, and we can still enjoy it, and that's something I love teaching. So I'll be working on my jar technique, right? All right, so that's Firefly, Firefly Frenzy. Try to say that three times fast. Hope you enjoyed that craft. All right, my very last craft is going to be a Northern Lights show. I love the pictures of the Northern Lights. Um, basically these bands of uh, blues and greens, whites, purples, even pinks um, in the sky. Now your child can make a choice on what kind of colors of the Northern Lights they want to create. We're also gonna put some mountains um, on our picture. So I'm actually gonna use regular cardstock here, but I'm gonna use acrylic paint, which means it's gonna dry pretty fast. And that's okay, actually. I'm using black. <laughs> I just I just remembered I don't want to use white. We're going to use the black for the contrast. So I might, with my pencil, show you a little bit of preliminary planning. And you can use a white crayon or maybe I'll use my white oil pastel here to kind of um, have a little plan of how these lights are going to look. So first we're going to make some mountains. So I'm just going to use my pencil and sketch. Mountains don't have to be perfect. They can be a little rugged looking. Okay. So make a line of mountains across. And then look for like a focal point in the center of your piece. And you're going to kind of create these bands that kind of come out of that center piece. So I'm going to go ahead and use the oil pastel so you can see what I do here. Oops, let's make sure I can do very lightly. These so are going to be like the bottoms of the bands. Okay, I just made kind of three, nothing too fancy. And I'm gonna blend that just so it's not super bright on that paper, because I will be covering it with paint. Now, first things first, we're gonna add our stars so they dry, and I'm gonna use acrylic paint for that, just like I did it on the other, um, where you take a, a brush, actually I have a new one, with some white paint and you just kind of splatter it by hitting it with another brush. So very important to do your stars first so they have a chance to dry. I 
I think it's supposed to come off the brush. <laughs> For some reason, it just wasn't. Oop, there goes a, there goes one of those happy little mistakes. <laughs> we'll work with it. Oh, there's another one. All right. For some reason, this brush isn't working. So let me go ahead and wipe off some of this white. <laughs> So the stars work so perfect with the other brush and they, so you guys see this? Look, you might be like, ah, I messed this up. I'm gonna work with it. I'm gonna show you how it's okay when this happens. So let's see if I can get stars <laughs> with a different brush. Okay, for some reason my brush just wasn't letting the paint come off. All right. We're not even gonna see those white marks when we, when we get this going. <laughs> But the stars are going to dry while I work on mountains. So for the mountains, and I brought all these acrylics here. These are my Northern Light acrylics ready for me. Um, I'm going to use, if I can find the color. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. I'm going to use a gray first for my mountains. Like I said, you can um, put it on a palette, but sometimes for ease, I just use it directly from the thing. So I'm just going to kind of feather out my mountains here with some gray to get the initial look of them going. Remember, I'm using acrylic on paper. It's going to dry super fast. And I'm also giving it kind of like a feathery look here have the mountain ranges kind of come down. Mountains are really fun and easy to explore. A little bit of shadowing and techniques involved. All right, so there's my mountain, my mountain range, okay? Super easy, super fast. Now I have that gray. I'm going to add a dark brown with some of that contrast. It'll blend a little bit. And if it's too much, I will add some more gray. That dried super fast. <laughs> here. So I do want that little brown look and I'm going to go ahead and add a little gray here. I'm, I'm using the same brush that has the brown on it because I do not mind the blending at this point. I'm just pulling down, giving that appearance of snow. work with it. Maybe on your foothills here there is some snow so we're gonna put some contrast with the gray and the brown together. And I'm really not gonna use white paint on the mountains because I want to save some of that for the sky. So I'm just using a gray and a brown basically to make mountains. Oop, that's a lot, so we don't want all that. All right, I'm going to call that done for my mountains. I'm going to show you what I got going on. All right, so just kind of that simple mountain range look. Just blending some browns and grays really quickly. They dried really fast. All right, so I'm gonna need, it's very important for this next step with your Northern Lights, 
to have brushes that do not have, have not been used yet so you don't want anything that's wet so I'm going to use brand new brushes I'm going to actually use this one for the spreading of the lights and I'm going to find a brush I've got so many I've used here I'm going to find a new brush to apply the paint and I'll show you the technique it's really cool and fun and hopefully we can make those mistakes kind of disappear with this so okay brand new brush so what I'm gonna do I might actually put the paints out I'm gonna go ahead and choose these four colors that are gonna be my northern light colors I'm gonna put them in four different spots here as I make my bands I'm going to kind of put the paint in the on on the band and I'm going to use my other brush and pull upwards so it's a very simple motion I want to make sure I have some of this white too so I'm going to use white yellow uh, a blue a turquoise a purple a green just mixing those making them really colorful northern lights okay so let's see I need my white I think my palette is all ready here. So I'm going to start with one of those areas that I really kind of messed up. So we're going to go ahead and take the one brush and just keep it paper towel or something so you can wipe the color off without getting it wet, okay? I'm going to start with white on a band here. Lower band. And then, you know, kind of wipe that white off. I'm going to add some yellow to it. I'm kind of making it like a line, a little bit extra paint than just flat, so I can spread it upwards. Dry that off. I'm going to add a little green on the white. So you start with the base, either white or yellow, and then you're going to add your northern light colors just on top of it. We're going to start with that. So there's my little band, my first band line. Now I'm going to take the dry brush, thicker dry brush, and I'm just going to move this upwards, okay? And you can play around with how much paint you need. You'll see what's happening here. I can still see the other band that I'm going to work on the top. This is like the bottom one. Okay? So there's my first, my first band, right? And the one green didn't show up too well, so I can kind of add a little bit more there. Maybe some white. Not sure why it didn't show up, and I'll just stretch that up. All right, so the, another band actually goes through this one. So if you can kind of imagine, still see the line, you're going to go ahead and repeat that next step following the band. I'm going to make sure I put some purple on this one. You can put either white and purple. Maybe a little green still goes there. All right, so I made another band coming out from the center, and it's going to pull upward again. I'm going to make sure I dry this brush off so I'm not blending all the colors. So remember, do not wet the brush. Just have a, a spare towel or something and get all the paint off that you can. And then once again, this is going to be pretty bright because I put some whites in there. But I also put some purples. Up I go. Keep going. All right, you'll be able to see the three-dimensional look there. You see that with that band? Remember, I'm starting in the center and going upwards. Okay, so now I'm going to use. I'm going to see my next little band dry off all. Don't use water. <laughs> Tell yourself, don't use water. You want to keep that dry look going on. So we're going to just dry off my pencil, or my, 
my brushes and I'm going to start again with some of the color and let's use some yellow this band goes up this way they kind of go you know they run into each other and then they go on their on their own way purple green blue right there okay I made another band I'm ready to pull upwards Don't be afraid to kind of go through some of those areas and what do you think? There's another band that's turning out perfect. The key is that that center point to really make that center point and have those few, I got about four here coming out from it. And you know, you can kind of see my imperfection of the drop that fell, but oh well, I wanted to work with it. So I have one more band here to do. So I'm going to make sure I do some blue. white and you're able to see the stars through which is really cool all right that's my last band I'm gonna dry my brush off real good and I'm gonna stretch it upward That's my finished piece of Northern Lights. See how easy that was? Acrylics on black paper. Okay. All right, I'm gonna recap just a few of these crafts. And I do want to share um, the products that Liam and I sell here at Thriving Heart Studio. We work on greeting cards. We might even make some Northern Light greeting cards now that I'm looking at how cool these are. And I think Liam could totally get that, that motion upward with the lights. So we do have this set available for purchase. You get 12 envelopes and you get these beautiful thinking of you cards with the, for the month of uh, February, we chose hearts. And he, he created the phrases, nice love is yours to give, and may love be your strength. So this whole set can be purchased for $40. You support small business. You support Liam with his leisure activities and creative expression. And we truly ap appreciate your business. All right, I'm going to recap the four, the four crafts we made here today at Driving Heart Studio during Illuminating Lights very first craft let's see where they go the simple radiating heart look there it is keep that white in the center use tape and you can create hearts the second one is my moonbeams on water whoa didn't that turn out beautiful just using acrylics blending creating a moon stars adding the light to the water beneath and then we made fire fire firefly frenzy blending some oil pastels on black paper creating that jar in a field with a moon above and last but not least we created a northern light show mountains and northern light bands above using acrylic paint on black drawing paper all right i appreciate you here let me know what you create let me see your ideas we love we love to see you take one of our ideas and expand on it in your own way 
And you're welcome to always post and share any creative projects um, that we inspire and inspire in you. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being supporters of us here at Thriving Heart Studio.